Michael Little is the youngest competitor in this year's Coke Classic. He ranked in the top five juniors in Australia and has already played for the Queensland adult team with distinction. His performance at the 1997 Nationals saw him win a position in the Australian All-Star team. For the last couple of years, I guess, I've sort of been bowling against this sort of competition, so I sort of know some of the guys, but it's pretty good to be out there with them. I reckon I'll be pretty nervous to begin with, but after a few frames, I reckon I'll get settled in pretty well. Today, he takes on Ashley Riley from Devonport in Tasmania, our runner-up in last year's Coca-Cola Classic. Ashley has bowled a perfect game on five separate occasions and is an international gold medal winner for Australia. The first six months of the year, I, uh, I, hadn't, I hadn't been bowling too well, but uh, just lately, the last couple of months, I've been feeling really good. So, uh, yeah, and a couple of 299s. And I feel like I'm concentrating very well, and, and that's helped me a lot, so hopefully I can keep that going. Looking forward to this game. Two young, talented Australian bowlers going head-to-head -head in this quarterfinal. And it's going to be the Queensland's Michael Little to lead off. He has a current league average of 203. The 18-year-old student from Brisbane. And, uh, a couple of good wins to get here. Defeated Steve Lovell and Jeanette Baker. So a couple of big scalps. First ball, first frame. Oh, perfect. What a start. Michael Little. Well, it is a good start for Michael. He got the ball to go long down the lane and it finished hard and fast. It's good to welcome back to the microphone again in commentary with us today, New South Wales captain, current Australian team member Sue Castle. And we're seeing Sue for the first time, uh, Ashley Riley from Tasmania. Yes, Ashley's had uh, tremendous form on the board uh, of late, recently having uh, two 299 games to his credit. He fires back with a strike of his own, and you can tell by that little punch in the air that he's pretty determined today, sir. That was a great shot there by Ashley. Just seeing our replay here. A pin from the left-hand side of the lane, across the top of the deck and taking out that 90. So already a couple of contenders for our cool foam magic moment in this game. It's, of course, the shot or frame that wins a game. They're looking for the best one right throughout the Co-Classic. The player that... Uh, Wins that at the end, 1,000 bucks cash. So, a strike apiece. Oh, well, he Ashley. likes it. He yeah. likes it. He knew it was a good shot. Got it well out on the lane. Made a plenty of room. He's our second seeded player, so I guess he's living up to that at the moment. Yes, he won't let us down. We'll be in for a fine match today from Michael and also Ashley. So Michael recorded the fifth highest average over the uh, entire competition. We're talking about the uh, Rockway competition. Journey of a place in the national all-star team recently. So he's had uh, a good year, a good 12 months, and he's having a good start to this game with another strike. So strikes all round from both these players to start the quarterfinal. Well, look at this. We've got both, as you say, Bill, up with strikes. And, of course, there is a $5,000 bonus for anyone who bowls at 300. The perfect score. And, of course, that is courtesy of AMF and the gold pin. And not often you see that. If it uh, does happen to go off, it'll be the first time we'll see it on television outside the USA. So, fingers crossed we may see the 5,000 go off today. A little number three, not to be. Look, just to be a little bit too soft on that shot, Glenn. Yeah, I, I'm not too sure whether uh, whether he got out of it as clean as he would have liked to, but uh, no, he's left the baby split on the left hand side. Michael, he's uh, showed great composure throughout the earlier rounds of the Coca Cola Classic, as he said, defeating two of the more experienced campaigners, certainly in Jeanette Baker, a, a legendary player. Oh, that's looking good. Yeah. Right on the money. Michael really winding it up there to go cross lane to take out that baby split. Absolutely nothing separating these two at the moment, so uh, I think we're in for one uh, heck of a quarterfinal. Ashley, of course, last year's Coca-Cola Classic runner-up. 
He also won the Canberra Open in 96. And a former Australian Masters winner. Come on. Bring it up. Oh, he's oh. got another one. Oh, Sue, oh. that's that's a lucky break for Ashley. He was very high on the head pin, wasn't he? he I, got thought away he with it. I thought he was extremely lucky there to get away with it. But that's, that's probably what uh, you need when you're going to bowl a 300. You certainly need that little bit of luck to get you on the way and uh, he definitely got it with that shot. He did and there's a lot of luck in this game of 10 pin bowling. Still on target for the perfect game is Ashley but uh, whoa! <laughs> Anything could have come there. Yeah. So uh, a $5,000 bonus. It's going to have to stay on hold or stay on ice for a while. We see Ashley changing balls here to uh, shoot cross lane for the seventh pin to make the spare, hopefully. Yeah. And he does just that. Ashley now taking a 10 point lead over Michael Little from Queensland. Oh, struck goal. Third strike for Michael Little. That was a solid shot. That was a good shot there from Michael. It's interesting to note the uh, contrast in the emotion between these two bowlers. Michael very composed and um, sort of not very exuberant on the lanes and Ashley is basically the complete opposite. He gets right into it, throws himself all over the lanes, hands up, expression. Start of the fifth frame. Is it a strike to start it with? No, it's not. And again, that, was, that shot was a little bit light coming into the pocket. I think Mark would be quite happy that he actually managed to uh, knock over the 10 pin as well, making um, the spare a little bit easier to um, cover. Now, we've seen a number of our players attack spares differently. Those who could swing the ball, and Michael chooses to wind it up still when going across the lane for a spare. Ashley Riley now leading by 10 pins as he sets up for his fifth frame. Started bowling Ashley as a 13 year old at a bowling centre a couple of hundred metres from home and obviously he hasn't looked back. result for him. He's really in the groove. Well, he's had five strikes, uh, five shots, I should say, for four strikes and a nine count. Ashley is really in fine form today. Well, he took a lot of time on that one, prepared for it, and a great results for him. Sue, I like the way Ashley's playing the lanes at the moment. He's, he's quite deep inside with his body, and he's really giving it a lot of room. He is straight through, you see there. Sometimes a little bit off the box at the point of release. It almost looks like he's falling off the shot, but uh, he actually does that after he's let the ball go, so that's OK. So a 21-point uh, margin now, 21-pin margin, I should say. Michael Little chasing Ashley Riley. Come on. Well, that's the best way to take back a margin, off them all into the pit. This boy won't be intimidated, you can uh, make sure of that. Now cravat lanes. Michael Little, seventh frame. Just runs it across, he's got uh, three pins to complete the spare. He's had three shots on the uh, left-hand lane that he hasn't been able to uh, put it basically in the pocket and knock over 10 pins. I'm just wondering whether he's actually made an over-adjustment, uh, taking into consideration that the last two shots actually went light. Maybe he's uh, made a little bit too much of a move, Glenn. Perhaps he, that's true, sir. And, and Michael would be certainly aware of the fact that he's failed to get into the groove on the left-hand lane at this stage. But he makes the spare. Ashley Riley uh, about to make his next shot, and he goes into that with a 21-pin lead. In fact, he's perfect uh, out of uh, six shots, five strikes. If he was to go all the way, he'd finish with a 279, and that would edge out our tournament high game to this stage by one pin, of course, Carl Bottomley, with a 278 already played.
Looking for a third successive. Ooh, very close. Ten pin. It's very interesting there. Ashley actually gave that ball a lot more room than the last ball he threw on this lane. You can see it on the replay. He's thrown it right out wide. So, so coming back though. Coming pocket. back. Yep. It maybe came back a little bit, bit too, too hard. Yeah. That's why we've left the ten pin. And the six just wrapping around the ten there. Oh. oh. Well, took it uh, left across. Right, left to right, right across the lane and uh, down through the gutter. So. Well, score-wise, Ashley's still in front, but uh, this is an opportunity when Michael is up next for his shots uh, to see what happens. Yep, so Ashley's um, got a lead of eight pins at the moment. That lead has been reduced due to the uh, bad misfortune of Ashley missing that 10-pin spare in the last frame. Here we go now, the eighth frame of this quarterfinal, Ashley Riley. Yep, he'll be looking to forget that last shot and come back in with a strike. Yep. The call. Yes, good call too. Certainly answered the challenge. And... That is a great comeback after opening a frame, and that is exactly what you need to do when, you, when you're down to the 8th, ninth, and 10th frames of the game. That's the mark of a champion too, isn't it? Yep. Perfect so shot. The, the mark of one of our cool foam magic moments. It's uh, don't forget a turning point or a great shot in a game. Okay, we've got Michael coming up for his shot here. He's basically hit uh, the pocket every time on this lane. So, yep. Oh, what a little beauty. Another strike is this quarterfinal hot up in the Coca-Cola 10-pin classic. Okay, eight pins as we approach the all-important ninth frame. Yeah, I think this is the decider here. Um, this is going to basically determine whether Michael can take the match and stay in it. Still, again, having trouble on that left-hand lane. And, and the expression on his face basically sort of hints to me that he is a little bit puzzled what, about how this lane is playing. So in that instance for Michael, where we know that he's bowling well, he can handle the right-hand lane, do you think that you would really go for broke and maybe make a ball change perhaps on the left-hand lane? Because he's made some adjustments and he's still not quite there. Yeah, it does appear as, as if he's made one adjustment, the ball's come up too light, so he's made another adjustment, the ball's gone too high. Uh, basically, when you've tried everything you can and it's a no-win situation type thing, you really need to pull out all, all stops. But to his credit, Michael makes yet another spare and a difficult one at that. Look, he's, he's still bowling an excellent game. I mean, he's still looking at a 2.18 pace if he manages to um, obtain three strikes in the 10th frame. And, and that's nothing to be disgraced about. He's, he's played excellently all game this game. Ashley Riley about to start his uh, ninth frame. And uh, well, if he strikes all the way through, he's looking at a 2.46. And of course, uh, a berth perhaps in the semi-finals. Basically, basically uh, Ashley needs to get this strike in, in this frame and uh, put the pressure on Michael. Oh, didn't that one Ooh. come back? And uh, Gee, Sue, Ashley got away with that. He knows it wasn't the greatest release in the world, but uh, the way the ball's screaming back into the pocket, he got a good count there. Yeah, again, he sent it out to the, to the dry area in the right-hand lane. He's worried about it. You can see the look on his face there. And just a little bit unfortunate not to take that 10 pin out. Now, make amends. He picks up the 10 pin for Ashley Riley from Tasmania. That now gives him an 8 pin lead going into the 10th frame for both of these players today. So, very close. As we've seen uh, in uh, our quarterfinals so far, nothing separating the competitors, as you'd expect. Okay, so basically we're, we're looking at Ashley really needs to get the next two strikes to shut Michael out. If he only gets the first one, Michael can still come back here with three strikes in a row and take the match. Is that the first? Oh, no, it's not going to be. And... That is an excellent shot there. We'll have a look at this one, hopefully coming up on the replay. I mean, that is just a definite wall is just hooking so strongly it goes straight through doesn't have a chance to take out the nine pin well what does he do here sue take, takes one take the one certainly nailed it right into the back of the pit that one and uh, 
Now this makes it interesting. Ashley Riley from Tasmania finishing with a 203 game. Of course, Ashley was runner-up in last year's Coca-Cola 10 pin classic. Okay, so basically um, Michael needs to close the 10th frame to win this match. I mean, in my opinion, Ashley's shot in the, in the 10th frame was the magic moment. There's no way in the world he, he really did deserve to leave that 7-9 split. Michael looking to close it out. Well, he's got a good count of nine, but Sue, this is a toughest pin he does, for most right-handers. Yeah, exactly. He does need to keep this frame closed if he's going to win the match. Uh, but let's bear in mind, he's finishing on his good lane. He really hasn't missed on this lane at the moment. So we'll just keep our fingers crossed and uh, see what happens. Well, imperative. He uh, closes this, takes the spare. A nail biter. Come on, come on. The edges on it, yes, he's got it. So there we go. This is setting it up for a, a heart-stopping finish to the quarterfinal. Okay. This Sue, is so, wow. sort of reminiscent of his last match, isn't yeah. it? He only won his last match over Jeanette by one pin. And, uh, if he's going to win this match, he needs to knock over seven pins in the next ball. Six would give us our first draw in the Coke Classic. Seven for a win from Michael Little from Queensland, the 18-year-old. And let's remember, he's bowling on his best lane at the moment for this game. So I think we can basically say he'll easily get that. Well, what's he come up with? Well, what's he done? He's seven. done the seven. Seven. So there it is. Yet another tight one in the Classic today. A thriller. Our youngest competitor in the Coca-Cola Classic. Michael Little from Queensland into the semi-finals. So that scoreline, 204 to 203. Yet again, I have this young 18-year-old up on the winning dice here for the moment, and that's Michael Little from Queensland. Michael, congratulations. Another tight one, but yet another win. Yeah, I was a bit worried about the last shot, but finally got there. Well, in fact, you needed seven pins to win. Was that in the back of your mind at all, or were you not worrying about the score? I was doing the scores in my head and I knew I needed seven to win, but I was trying to get the clean shot in the pocket. Well, you've had two close matches. One, you beat Jeanette Baker by a pin to remove her from the tournament, and now you've done exactly that from our or four, Tasmania's Ashley Riley. Michael, you now go into a semi-final match. You're coming up against Frank Ryan. Now, you would have seen Frank before when it comes to the state representative tournament, the Rockway. Yeah, I did. I watched him this year down over in Perth. All right, Michael, then good luck for the next match. Hope it goes well. Okay, thank you very much. Well, how about that? Three wins for Michael, two of them absolute thrillers. Are you surprised to see him advancing this far? Well, he's bowling well, Bill. That's two matches out of three that he's won so far in the Coke Classic by just the narrowest of margin by one pin. Michael now moves into the semi-final match. That'll be against Frank Ryan. But we'll have to see. He's, he's on fire at the moment and he's got plenty of crowd support from the Queenslanders. OK, a couple of other contenders in quarterfinals next week. What's ahead? Well, next week we see Victoria's Warren Stewart and he'll be taking on Sam Romeo from New South Wales. The two have played each other many, many times. Again, it's going to be another close one. Yep, should be another great game next